get started. Welcome to video number three in adaptive cursor sharing. I'll put links to the first two videos in the description below, but just to quickly recap, the first video we showed the issues of having no bind variable peaking at all, and the second video we showed bind variable peaking in action, but some of the issues that arise with the early implementations, the things that led us to adaptive cursor sharing, and we're gonna see that for the first time in this video right here. Once again, if you want to see me talk through the table creation process in a bit more detail, head to video one, but because I'm assuming most of us have seen video one and two, we'll fly through this fairly quickly. Here's our table T1, and I'm gonna populate it as before with 500,000 rows. The values one through 19 will all have just a single row, and the value of 20 will have all of the rest, nearly 500,000 rows. We'll put an index on that table and we'll create a, some stats and create a histogram as well, such that the optimizer has great information. It's a frequency-based histogram, which is optimal. And just to prove we have that distribution, which I mentioned before, row values one through 19 occur once and the value of 20 occurs nearly half a million times. Adaptive cursor sharing is really just an improvement on bind peaking, that the concept of peaking at a value still occurs. And so let's go through the same demo as we did before. I've set the bind variable to a value of 10, and then I run my query. You can see there from the output that there's only one row for the bind variable of 10. And if we look at the optimizer plan, the database got it exactly right. You can see the rows column there said, yes, there's only gonna be one row. That's what I expect. That was in fact the reality. And because of that, the optimizer chose to use an index. That's standard bind variable peaking. That's pretty cool. I'm going to introduce a new query to the data dictionary in this video that we haven't seen in the other videos, having a look at the v$SQL or the library cache to look at this particular SQL statement. There's three columns that are gonna be of interest for the rest of this video, but we'll just focus on one for the time being. And that is the first one, which is, is shareable. So there's our SQL that we've just run. And you can see that it says it's is shareable is yes. That means that repeated executions and parses of this statement can actually reuse the plan and the cursor information there. So it's a reusable piece of SQL. Notice there's another column there, which is, is bind sensitive. That is also set to Y. That's the new implementation of adaptive cursor sharing coming in. The database has noted that the value inside the bind variable is actually critical to the optimizer plan being chosen. It's made a note of that for repeated executions of this SQL. So let's repeat one. Now I'm gonna set my bind variable value to 20 and run the query. As we've seen before, that returns almost the entire table, nearly half a million rows. Now, did the database do a peak inside that value? Well, we saw in the previous video that it really wouldn't be smart to peak all the time inside every single value because that might defeat the purpose of bind variable peaking in terms of minimizing the number of plans and cursors in the shared pool. Well, that leads to the same issue we saw in the previous video, which is I didn't actually get a new plan. It actually said, well, I'll use the index range scan for this. And you can see the row estimate was still one row. That's a problem because we know we returned half a million rows. So what's the big deal here? Why have, what have we gained with using adaptive cursor sharing? Let's run the query one more time and go have a look at our query against v$SQL. Notice now there is a second child cursor. The first cursor which we had before is no longer shareable. You can see the is shareable has been set to no. Effectively, it's become defunct. The new cursor that's been built below it is shareable, yes, so it's going to be picked up by other executions of this statement. It's bind sensitive, but a new flag has been set as well, that it's bind aware. This cursor has now made a special note to say, when I throw different values of bind variables at it, this could have a critical impact on the optimizer plans. Because of that, the cursor has adapted, hence adaptive cursor sharing. So now when I run my query, for bind variable value of 20. Yes, I still get the same result, obviously, but look at the execution plan. We've picked up a new plan that is relevant to particularly this bind variable value. We're using a table access full, which is ideal for that many rows. Now, what happens if I go back to the original bind variable value of 10? 
am I now getting in a table access full and therefore defeat the whole purpose? Well, let's give it a go. I put in my bind variable value of 10, I get the one row I expect, but let's have a look at the plan. And the plan has also adapted. That's adaptive cursor sharing in play. Different values of bind variables are sensitive to the creation of the perfect plan, and hence the cursor adapts to pick the right plan for the right value of bind variables. And that is adaptive cursor sharing, the ability to take bind variable peaking as its implementation in the early versions of Oracle and extend upon it and improve upon it to make sure we generally get the correct optimizer estimates no matter what value of the bind variables we put in there. Adaptive cursor sharing is like bind variable peaking on steroids. So that's pretty cool. But in the next video, we'll look at where adaptive cursor sharing perhaps struggles and where it might catch you up. See you then. I'm